let's start with what this data looks like. So we're looking at a Power Pivot spreadsheet right now, a Power Pivot document. And these are basically a list of tables that you're seeing right here. Now, I'm going to show you in a second how, how data gets here. But what my goal of showing this to you was is watch how fast this data actually compresses. This data is compressed at least 10 to 1 ratio. So behind this, there's about a, about a gosh, I want to say it's about a 4 gig data warehouse. And if I sort by, let's say, for example, sales quantity, and let's go with largest to smallest. Now, my laptop is about a 4 gig laptop. It's uh, not terribly beefy. Uh, let me sort with something more interesting. How about uh, store key instead? And watch how fast it sorts. Ready, set, go, done. All right, well, how about, how about uh, customer key? All right, ready, and set, go, sort it. So this is actually sorting 12 million rows, and you saw that happen in less than a second. The reason why it's able to do that is because all the data is living in memory. It's able to easily compress that data to at least 10 to 1 ratio and pivot it in memory. So what's actually happening, because I had the Power Pivot plugin installed, and I got that Power Pivot plugin from PowerPivot.com or Microsoft's website, after I installed that, it gives me a new tab that I have access to. And that, uh, that new tab gives me access to a whole bunch of stuff. It actually installs a small version of Analysis Services inside of inside of Excel. So no, no analysis is actually required. Uh, Diana, you're asking a question about uh, the Expedition Denali. If you go to expeditiondenali.com, I'll put it in your, website, in, your uh, in your chat window right now, expeditiondenali.com. Hopefully I spelled that correctly. You'll see a list of all the cities we're doing them in this year. We have some more cities this year, but I'm basically doing uh, every other week I'm, I'm on the road right now doing a different city. Okay, and again, it's an NDA-only event, so you're going to see stuff that nobody else has seen yet. So a question here from David, which is really appropriate right now, is how much memory do you need uh, on the server to do this, or on the client? So the client, the, the, as I sort this data right now, there's, I'm not interacting with the server at all in this case. I'm disconnected from the server. And all the sorting I'm doing is actually happening on the client side, not on the server side. Uh, this has about 4 gigs of RAM, in my case, but I actually have done the same demo on a netbook before with about 2 gigs of RAM, and I sorted 200 million rows just as fast. Uh, that's all, all, all movie data in that case. So the limits, typically about 4 gigs of, of a spreadsheet, about, about as far as you want to go, 4 gigs of, of the data itself you want to load in this. Once you get past that, you're kind of reaching a scalability point where, um, where this model is not going to be appropriate for this time. Hope that answer your question, David. Keep them coming. So let me go. Let me jump out of this real quick, and let's show the next piece. So I'm going to open up a virtual environment. Let's, let's see how we do here. All right. Okay. So I, I'm signed into a virtual environment right now. Uh, I have some terminal server in, so we'll see how we do today. Okay. And what I have is I want to build a spreadsheet that basically analyzes my sales. So. I want to show you how we're going to do that now. So uh, a question here from Ashish. Uh, why do you have to write MDX queries initially to get the data from the cube? Why, can you not use, uh, why can't it, it do it like Excel? Well, that's a good question. And let me show you that a second here. That's a good question, Ashish. So let me come. I'm actually going to show that right now. So what I'm going to show right now is basically building a report. Now, I have some data inside of, uh, of Excel. Some data is out there they're in access, and maybe some data somewhere else. But right now, I'm going to communicate with the data warehouse first. So I'm going to go to my Power Pivot window. This icon is available to me in Excel 2010. Again, it's all I have installed right now. It's Excel 2010 and the Power Pivot plugin, which is free. Now, once I see that tab, it basically takes me to this new tab called the Power Pivot tab. Now, inside this tab, I have my own ribbon here. We can also see that I'm getting data from analysis services or a power pivot document. I can get data from Access or SQL Server. Or if I say, let's go to other data sources, look at all the data sources that I can get it from. Uh, yeah, it's Excel 2010 only, though. So Excel 2007 does not work, unfortunately. So look at all these data sources. Though. You might recognize your data source here, like IBM or OLADB. Any kind of OLADB or ODBC compliant data source is actually listed here. So 
we're having up a, a quite a bit of data sources here, including cell or even reporting services. So reporting services can actually be a data source in R2 into SharePoint, or into, sorry, into Power Pivot. We can also get data feeds from the web as well. So if I have a data feed, uh, an, R, an o, a, um, RDL file, or sorry, RSS file, or a um, open query file, I can actually bring that data into this as well. For the time being though, I'm going to communicate with SQL Server. And I've got an instance right here. Oh, I say that. Let me hit the drop down box. I'm in the penalty box right now. All right, uh, great question from Colleen. Are 64-bit drivers supported? They're actually supported and they're preferred in many cases. Uh, so I'm, I'm running on a 64-bit uh, laptop, which definitely helps because we're crunching a lot of numbers here. It does work in 32-bit laptops also, but in 64-bit, it definitely will speed up. So I'm going to communicate with our existing data warehouse. I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to start with just the data warehouse. Now keep in mind, the goal of this product is really geared at, at end users. Not at you, but at end users. So what I want to do in this case is I want to grab data from either a query or I just want to grab data from a whole bunch of tables here. When I hit next, I'm going to see a whole bunch of tables that I have access to right now. So in my case, let's, let's start again at end user. I'm going to look at my internet sales. So I'm looking at my AdventureWorks internet sales database. And I'm going to select Fact Internet Sales, which is what holds all my sales for internet uh, department. After I do that, I'm going to hit Select Related Tables. This is going to look at the referential integrity in those data, this, this table and find out these are the tables that relate to that table. Now, after I do that, I can say, well, that's good, but I want to get other ones also. Maybe I want to get things like uh, geography. Uh, maybe I want to get things like product category and subcategory. Um, I already have sales territory. So all those things I can bring over as part of that. I want to make sure I have customer also. Now notice so if I pick on like a geography, for example, and keep on, I'm an end user here. If I hit preview and filter, I can now basically write a query that says I only care about certain areas. So I can uncheck these areas. I can sort the data, and it feels just like the Excel experience. I can tell you this is exactly what the BISM model is going to look like also. Almost the exact same UI, but in a bids environment, or sorry, a Visual Studio environment. So this is the same kind of environment you are going to feel inside of analysis services in a future release also. So let's hit finish. It's going to bring over the data. Now here's the important part. It's bringing over the data at a single point in time. So this data, the data it's bringing over, is now immediately stale as soon as I hit the finish button, the close button. This data immediately starts becoming stale. So I hit close. Now, to the question from Ashish, if I was connecting to analysis services, I wouldn't have to write an MDS. The query that's being passed into this is MDS, but I could, it could build the query for me. So I could say I want this dimension, this dimension, this dimension.